Hey there guys, thanks for joining me today as we take a look at Pioneer, a space game that's been in development for quite a while. It's an open source game, so that means that anyone can contribute uh, by contributing with stuff like programming or graphical art or sound or little scripts and missions and all that kind of stuff. It's a very cool game. Um, it looks quite cool. I mean, some of the things are quite boring. Look at the city, for example. It doesn't look all that cool. But, that said, it is more the game's functionality that is in a very good state currently. I'll show you the heads-up display and run you through all the things that this game can do for you and exactly how it works. We've got a couple of buttons here on this end and a couple of buttons here, which is basically, basically your F function keys. F1 is basically the different command, uh, different camera commands. F2 gives us a galaxy map, and this is really, really cool, because this game is huge. We're currently in the solar system, which is where Earth is, and all these little dots that you see here, all of them are stars with planets and moons and space stations. And we can go back and back and back and back, all the freaking way back. These are all stars that can be visited. Every single one of these is a solar system with a sun, planets, moons, space stations. And you can visit them all. But yeah, let's start, uh, start by looking at our current solar system and how we maneuver through this exactly. Um, F3 gives us an overview of our little ship here, our purple little uh, Sinonatrix. You can see in the top it's got a hyperdrive installed. We can travel 16.4 light years. That's basically how far we can travel between solar systems. Some weight information, weapons, maximum speed, and all that thing, all that stuff. Uh, atmospheric shielding, which is important if you want to be able to land on planets. And yes, this game has planetary landings. It's seamless in every freaking direction. It's very, very cool. So. Let's take off and I'll show you a couple of things about how to fly this ship. F5 makes us fly into the air. We've got landing gear sticking out here. F6 retracts the landing gear. And you can see little boosters currently flying off, keeping me in the air. This is because we're set to like an, an autopilot mode. If I press F5, you'll see that turns off and I'll have to keep myself in the air manually. But let's turn that off, as it is highly irritating. Directional boosters in every direction, allowing us to rotate. And you can see that they only give acceleration. I mean, they do turn off after they are setting you into a rotation. You can see as I rotate the ship, it's using the reverse thrusters and the forward thrusters to keep me into the air. It's very, very smart. Very, very cool. Right mouse button allows me to steer very simply. And you can see the little crosshair currently set into the direction that we are going. This is very simple and very easy to understand. It shows you where you're going and what direction. It's a lot more convenient in space than it is here in the city. So what I'll do is I will put us at a speed of two kilometers per second and then we're gonna take off into the air like crazies and then I'm going to show you some of the universe that lies ahead all right we are currently accelerating to two high low crosshair that we are actually still moving forward it's very slowly starting to move upwards and look at the stars coming visible as we leave the atmosphere Yes, uh, galaxy actually becomes visible in the background there. Let's autopilot to another place. For example, we can say, let's go to Mars. Let's find Mars on the map. And let's say that we want to enter a low orbit around Mars. 
There's autopilot in this game as you can see. And you can see we are currently 1.56 astronomical units away from this target, which is Mars. And luckily this game has fast forward, which will set us on our way that little bit faster. As you can see we're still traveling up and we're moving into the right direction. Away from our beautiful planet that we call Earth. Now you need to remember that if we accelerate, which we are currently doing, to a very high speed, let me quickly pause the game here. We are currently doing 2,672 kilometers per second. And obviously it's going to take us a while to accelerate at that speed, but we need to remember that it will take us the same amount of time to brake. And this is why the autopilot is so clever, because Usually, if you would fly yourself, it's very, very easy and very likely to happen that you overshoot your target. The autopilot reverses your ship automatically and uses the uh, the main engines to brake. Um, and I hope you'll be able to see that even though we are uh, fast forwarding. As you can see, we're currently doing 3,000. Yeah, and there we go. Gorgeous. You can see we're braking currently. Let's set the uh, real time speed right now. So we are in reverse basically, braking as fast as we can, going down from 3000 kilometers per second to currently 46 kilometers per second. And we're heading for a low orbit. You can see that the ship has just turned around again. This is still the autopilot doing its job. Trying to put us into an orbit around the planet. And there we go. The autopilot has brought us into manual control, which basically means that we can turn the ship as we see fit and we are free floating into in the atmosphere of Mars. We're currently 4,000-ish kilometers up, doing 3.2 kilometers per second. And what a view, huh? Don't know exactly where the sun is from here. Oh, that's quite all right. I say we enter Mars for a little bit and take a closer look before we take our little spaceship here into a different solar system. I've just selected the city on Mars to see if we can get some extra fuel. It's right down there at 6,000 kilometers, um, which basically means it's on the other side of the planet. But that's all right, we're gonna go there. We're gonna tell the autopilot to fly to its vicinity. I think this is a cool little ship. Very small, but I like it. I've always had a thing for space. I'm very fascinated with space. Um, everything is so logical in space, isn't it? And it's very impressive. There we go, starting to push down a little bit. And again, this is all autopilot, because we're lazy. There's the city, tiny city. Again, not very impressive looking. This is me playing with the camera, trying to make it a bit more easy to uh, see where we're going exactly. Alright, so this is as close as the autopilot will bring us. Again, this is currently manual. Just to give you an, an idea. And I've just pressed F5 to put us in the awesome little position. Now the cool thing is, Instead of just docking with the uh, the space station here, which obviously we can do, we can just ask it for. Uh, oh God! Whoa! <laughs> As you can see, the engines are very, very strong. I mean, that's something to take uh, take, in, take into consideration when you manually fly. So yeah, like I was trying to say, you can land at the station or if you want to be a bit of a loner and you feel like you need some time on your own 
You can just say fuck it. I'm leaving the city. There we go. Landing is a bit iffy still. It's a silly bit of a... It, it connects. But hey, here we are. We landed outside a city on the planet Mars and we flew here from Earth. That's pretty damn cool though, isn't it? Beautiful. I mean, it's very impressive how this is done. Everything is in a functional orbit. All right, so now we have new fuel. Let's go and take off. And travel to another solar system. We're gonna select this on the map. We'll have to uh, select a close one here, like Sirius. This one is 11 light years away, so we can make that. It's currently set as our hyperspace target. So instead of just plopping us straight into an autopilot, let's just leave orbit here. Currently accelerating out of two kilometers per second to six kilometers per second. And again, the speeds are incredible. Okay, let's activate our hyperspace here. Kapow! And here we have behind us our hyperspace exit cloud. Beautiful. Now we have a base here that we can fly towards, but it is 17 astronomical units away, so let's not put that all on video shall we this is nice about the uh, the space travel if you travel towards another solar system you're still gonna be about 17 astronomical un units out from where you're actually trying to go so it will still take you days days to make it and that is crazy alright guys I'd like to thank you very much for taking a look at uh, Pioneer with me I hope you enjoyed it you can uh, obviously download it uh, for free at the website URL I'll put down in the description. I le really recommend that you go and have a little look at it, even though it's not complete, even though there's still errors, as you can see on the screen right now, texture is not working, model's not working, some things just not looking as fluent as you would expect. It is a high potential platform that I would recommend that you take a look at. So yeah, go have a look at it if you uh, have a, c a couple of minutes. And yeah, I'll see you next time.